Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Uh, today's show, I want to take you back a little bit maybe to your childhood. And for some of you, uh, maybe what I'm going to talk about has nothing to do with your childhood. Maybe it has absolutely everything to do with your adulthood. So what am I talking about? Well, I'll tell you what, it's something that my daughter absolutely enjoys, but my son absolutely hates. It's something that I tolerate that my wife won't have any part of. What am I talking about? I'm talking about roller coasters. And you're tuning in and saying, roller coasters? Dude, you have gone off your rocker. No, no, not really. Not really. I haven't gone off my rocker, at least not yet. But when you think about a roller coaster. What what do you think about? I mean, first first you got to get to the amusement park, and then you got to pay a bunch of money to get inside the game. I mean, inside the uh, the gate, and uh, you walk around inside the gate. And of course, we're we're following social distancing, so you stand in the line. You try and stay six feet in front of and behind the person in front of you. Imagine what that looks like. I mean, I've been in lines at amusement parks where social distancing would just make that line literally go all. All the way around the park. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyhow, you get through the turnstile and the first thing you do is you sit down in a car. Now, some of you like to sit in the front. Some of you like to sit in the back. Some of you don't really care where you sit as long as you get on the darn thing. So you sit down on what is a very hard plastic bench-like or seat-like contraption and this bar with foam kind of lowers down onto your onto your legs above your thighs some some roller coasters they've got actual you know six point harnesses that you've got to get into and, and there's a reason for that but however that roller coaster is configured for safety there's some young kid pushing a button that is going to create some type of thrill in your life so you the the cars start moving forward very slowly, and then you get to that initial incline. You hear click, 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 all the way to the very top. And you get to the very top, and you, and you say to yourself, wow, what a gorgeous view. And as soon as you're done thinking that, it's whoosh, right to the bottom. And everybody's going, ah! And they're screaming and they get down to the bottom and all of a sudden it's, it's whoosh back up to the top. And you get to maybe not quite the highest spot that you were before. The view's still pretty good, but it doesn't last because you're going to go whoosh right back down. And maybe you'll go into some corns, what do they call those corkscrews. And sometimes maybe you'll go through like a, a 360 inversion. And sometimes you'll go through, you'll just go through other parts of the park. And by the time the thing is done, you come rolling in to the station and your 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 body is tingling your your throat is raw from screaming the your arm has teeth marks in it from the little kid sitting next to you that that's the only way he could comfort himself was to bite on your arm so you get off of that thing and you wonder what did i just do what did i just get involved with and my my comment regarding that is this think about the stock market Think about the roller coaster ride of the stock market. You know, I'm I'm looking at what the stock market is doing today, and I, I know there are those of you in there out there that are saying, Hey, don't pick on the stock market. It actually kind of came back. It it's it's doing what it's supposed to do. I was able to ride out that that bad time. And I'm here to tell you, okay, you made it this time. What about next time? See, when I look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and I'm looking at uh, basically a daily chart, it kind of looks like a roller coaster to me. It looks like, you know, it was kind of going up and 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 up. And it had little, you know, dips here and there, dips here and here. But then it went back up, 
And in February of this year, it started its decline. And I'll tell you what, it was a dramatic decline. It's kind of like the decline that you go on after you first get at the very top of a roller coaster and they take the brakes off and you go flying down. And and you get to the bottom of this thing and it starts taking you back up, taking you back up. And maybe there's some dips here and there because there are some dips here and there. And you get to a certain point where that roller coaster, I mean the stock market, peaks and then you start going back down again. That's what I'm seeing in the stock market. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to alarm you. I'm not trying to say, okay, it's doom and gloom. According to me, go cash in all your stocks. What I'm trying to impress upon you is this. If you're tired of riding the roller coaster, why don't you just stop? I mean, if you think about it, if most of your stocks are in the NASDAQ, Okay, the NASDAQ composite has done a little bit better. It actually hit a new high yesterday. I mean, I remember seeing on the TV all the pundits were saying, all right, your 401K should be looking really good now. You should have woke up and been really happy. Okay, happy until when? Because when you woke up today, what happened? The daily drop was almost 4%. 4% of your valuation tank today. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't know, but all the pundits on the news today are saying the reason it tanked is because of the concern of joblessness maybe going forward, that the recovery may not be quite where it needs to be, that there's other tangible factors that have not been factored into the market forces, and those tangible factors are now getting time. They're now getting an opportunity to make an impact on the stock market. So, you know, some of you are thinking, well, Al, I'm in the stock market for the long run. You know, that that big drop, that 30% drop that happened from, you know, I don't know, February until when did it go? Till about, uh, well, towards the end of March. So basically a 30-day drop where it, where it tanked 30%. Some of you are saying, well, I'm dollar cost averaging. So that actually was very beneficial for me because I was able to pick up a bunch of stocks that were on sale and they were added to my portfolio and now that the price has gone back up, I've made more money. Have you really made more money, or are you just riding a roller coaster? I'll tell you what, when we come back from the break, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lighten this up a little bit. I'm going to tell you about some of the best roller coasters in the world. And the reason I'm going to tell you about them is because it's information I think you need to have. We'll be back right after this. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So I've got a question for you. What if you just said, I'm done with the roller coaster of investments? I am done with dealing with the stock market. I am done with dealing with mutual funds. You know... There's, there are those of you out there that when the market started crashing, you sold your investments. And maybe that was a wise thing to do because you didn't want to ride that thing all the way down. Some of you chose not to do that. Some of you decided to ride that thing down. And fortunately, it appears to have come back up. But we don't know what's going to happen in the market. Now, I believe that we have a very strong economy. I, I realize that there are some issues going on right now that, you know, are, are impacting our ability to grow the economy, but the fundamentals are all there. Interest rates are there. Money flow is there. The things that impact the economy are there. We just got to open the darn economy back up. And that's the problem. So I'm looking at a cartoon and it's, to me, it's a funny cartoon. It's an editorial cartoon, and it's a picture of a roller coaster, you know, with a bunch of people in it. They're, they're at the very top of the roller coaster getting ready to go down. You know what's on the very front of the roller coaster? Wall Street. And you know what the coasters are named? Well, one is named stocks. One is named mutual funds. One is named bonds. You get the point? Yeah, that's the point. Now, I decided I was going to look for 
I did a Google search. Basically, I was looking for information on, you know, how you could possibly jump off the investing emotional roller coaster, because I, I think that's what really the stock market is. And you know what I found? I found a lot of content, a lot of content talking about how to deal with the roller coaster of Wall Street, how to deal with the roller coaster of the stock market. I mean, there's tons of advice out there, and a lot of it is basically the same thing. Don't get emotional. Don't watch the news. Don't panic. Let your, let your money grow at a rate of maybe 7 to 8% per, per month. But you know what I didn't find? I did not find anything that says how to get off the investment roller coaster with regards to real estate. Now, maybe maybe I didn't look hard enough, but I'll tell you what, you know, Google has populated a bunch of things for me and it all is talking about stock markets and it's all talking about trying to calm you down so that you'll keep your money in there because that's what society wants for us society wants us to keep our money into certain investments they want us to keep our money in iras they want us to keep our money in 401ks seps simples 403bs i'm sure there's like a couple others that i'm absolutely forgetting but those are the quote unquote qualified retirement plans and at the end of the day, I really think retirement is too strong of a word. Really what they are is savings plans because what you're trying to do is you're trying to save your way to retirement. You're trying to keep injecting money into these things and hoping that that money grows at a rate of 7 to 8% per annum. And I'll tell you, when it comes to real estate, we're not worried about a 7 to 8% growth per annum. What we're worried about is cash flow. We're worried about having those investments create income for us so that as we continue to grow those investments and we continue to get more passive income coming in, it gets us to a point in our life where we have enough passive income that supports our expenses. And in doing so, we can retire ourselves. And what you also find is this. When you start adjusting away from a W-2 income and you start adjusting towards a income of passiveness, in other words, passive income coming in, money that you're not physically going out there and working, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, six to seven days a week, you don't need as much money. You see, there are expenses associated with going to work and having a W-2 job. There are taxes associated with it. There's the cost of, of what I like to call the cost of employment, meaning, you know, depending on where you work, you have to wear a, appropriate attire. You can't just go in and, you know, shorts and flip flops like I like to do in a T-shirt. You know, that's that's kind of kind of how I, I look in the the, the warm periods of, of life. And, you know, dressing up to me is throwing on a piece of pair of jeans. Yeah. And maybe a collar shirt. But when I worked in municipal government. I had to dress the part. I had to have a sports coat, which I kept in the office all the time. I had to have ties, which I kept in the office all the time, mainly because I didn't have to wear a coat and tie all the time, but I was expected to wear a collared shirt. I was expected to wear nice slacks. I was expected to wear dress shoes. You know, that stuff costs money. And to maintain that stuff, that costs money too. Oh, and by the way, sometimes I would take my lunch, but most of the time, what did we do just to get out of the office, we would go eat out. So there was an expense associated with that. You know, when, when you work with real estate, you don't have those expenses. They're just not there. Now, can you go out and get something to eat for lunch? Okay, sure you can. But at the end of the day, you can prepare a nice meal for yourself in your kitchen because you have all the things that you need to do that right there. So your, your cost for food doesn't dramatically go up. I mean, you think about it. What what do you spend when you go out for lunch with with the gang at work? I mean, ten dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars. I don't know. You know, let's let's say a sandwich is costing you ten ninety five, and then you throw some fries on that, gets you to twelve bucks. You add the taxes on that, maybe it gets you to fourteen. Got to throw a tip on that. I don't know. Maybe that's another three bucks because the service was good. Now you're up to seventeen bucks. Let's say you do that five days a week. What does that equate to? $17 times five is 85 bucks. Multiply that by four weeks, 
you're spending about $340 a month to go out and grab something to eat. I would guarantee you, you could probably almost every day cook yourself a steak for that kind of money, but you don't need to do that. You know, another thing that you save money on is is self-employment taxes, Social Security and Medicare. See, right now in your W-2 job, you're paying half of it. Your employer's paying the other half. But when you use real estate as your primary source of income and you don't have W-2 income anymore, you don't necessarily have to pay that unless you put yourself in a position where you become self-employed, then you get to pay both sides. But when you're investing in real estate and that passive income comes in, you're not taxed that way. You're only taxed based on capital gains and those capital gains only materialize when you dispose of the property, not when you refinance the property because the value has gone up and you've taken money back out. See, I would tell you that the roller coaster that you're on in the stock market If it works, the key word is if, it's going to last you 35, 40, maybe 45 years before you start drawing that money down. And that's the key. You're drawing that money down. You're spending it every day, every month, every year. You're declining that balance. And remember, you don't have a job anymore putting money in. So you've got to worry about how long can you go. I mean, you're on a roller coaster. You're on a huge roller coaster. And I'll tell you what. I can't find anything about the real estate roller coaster, but I'll do some more looking at the break and maybe I'll find something. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Because creating that lifestyle you've always wanted is exactly why I'm here, to assist you with doing that. You know, I said at the before the break that I was going to go take a look for any type of roller coaster stuff with regards to single family and multifamily investments. And I, I'll tell you, the only thing I found was this. I found a, a roller coaster article that talked about retail. All right. Retail can be a roller coaster. So when you hear about roller coaster in you know, commercial real estate. Keep in mind that we don't invest in all forms of commercial real estate. We only invest in multifamily. And when when it comes to non-commercial real estate, we only invest in single family properties. That's, you know, single homes or duplexes, triplexes, or fourplexes based on our investing strategy. And ironically, one of the articles that I did find was talking about a gentleman that basically caused himself to go into bankruptcy because he didn't know what he was doing when it came to real estate investment. I mean, I could read you the whole darn article, but that really sums it all up. It was somebody that thought real estate investing was the way to go. He went out and bought property, not having a proper education. He went and bought property in a place where I know it just doesn't work. I know that the property values are are too high and the rent values are too low so that you cannot obtain positive cash flow when you buy that kind of property. All you're hoping for is appreciation. And in a lot of cases, and in the case of this article, this gentleman kept injecting money into the property. You know what? That's ludicrous. Do not, do not buy real estate only on the hopes that it will go up in value. See, that is just a benefit of investing correctly. The key thing is cash flow. That's it. I mean, you you know, you can go out and buy somebody else's books and tapes and stuff like that. And if they don't tell you that the key thing is cash flow, then you've wasted your money. Absolutely wasted your money. And I'll tell you what, cash flow is king because without cash flow, we don't buy a particular property, whether it's a single family property, whether it's a multifamily property, if it doesn't have the potential to throw off the appropriate amount of cash flow, we just walk. It's not worth it to us. It's absolutely not worth it to us. Now, in this article I'm reading, it goes on and talks about how this guy basically got himself an education. Yeah. And he started to reinvest in property. This is after he had filed bankruptcy because he didn't know what he was doing. Now, it doesn't say 
who he got his education from. It doesn't. And all I've got from the article is a first name. And, you know, with a first name, I can't call up Lifestyles Unlimited and go, hey, did this guy, first of all, I can't call up Lifestyles Unlimited and go, hey, does this guy have a membership because it's none of my damn business. But at the end of the day, I'm guessing that the reason this gentleman had success was because he shifted his thinking. He got a proper education. And based on what the article says, he's actually investing in communities where he gets passive income. He's getting cash flow and it's changed his life. Now, I can't, I can't, like I said, I can't tell you that it's a lifestyles unlimited investor, but I can tell you this education was the key to this guy's success where he got the education from. I don't really care. The fact that he finally got himself educated, he was able to do the right thing. The problem he had was this, he wasn't educated. When he got involved with this, he just thought, oh, real estate's a good thing. I'm just going to buy some property. Yeah, stinking thinking. You have to understand the markets first. You have to understand how to operate within the markets. You have to understand a lot of things. And those are the things that we teach you at Lifestyles Unlimited. I'm going to make no bones about it. You have to have a proper education, and we give you a proper education. And, you know, if, if you want to check us out, You've been listening to the show for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Some of you guys have been out there since, since I started, and some of you haven't taken any action. You haven't. Well, I'll tell you what. You need to start taking action because we've got to get you off this roller coaster you're on. You, you can do it. I have a lot of colleagues at Lifestyles Unlimited that have gotten off that roller coaster of the stock market. They have pulled their money out of their 401ks or their IRAs, and you're thinking, oh, my God, the sacred cow. No, not a sacred cow, just a savings account, okay? And, oh, but you're going to have to pay taxes and a penalty. All right, so what? You have to pay the taxes at some point or another. And the penalty? Well, we have vendors that can help you avoid the penalty if you're so worried about the penalty. So at the end of the day, they pull their money out and they invest it in real estate that is making them money five or potentially six different ways. That's not what you're doing in the stock market. You're on that roller coaster of hoping it just goes up and appreciates. It's not paying you dividends. Okay, maybe you own a couple of stocks within a mutual fund that pays a dividend. Is it really increasing your, your net worth? Not really. And what can you do with that? Well, if it's inside of those those entities, it has to stay in there. You can't pull it out. It's one of the reasons we, we tell our members, you know, you can invest from inside an IRA, but there are drawbacks to it. And of course, we go over all those drawbacks with you at our two-day financial freedom seminar course. But what I wanted you to do is this. I want you to go to freeworkshoplivestream.com. That's freeworkshoplivestream.com. When you get there, it's going to give you the opportunity to sign up for one of our free workshops. We're doing them all virtually right Right now, so they're offered on different days at different times. It, it can accommodate your schedule, and if it doesn't, you can adjust your schedule a little bit to accommodate this because it's going to give you the framework for the map that we follow at Lifestyles Unlimited. See, it's an hour and a half presentation, and you're thinking, oh my God, an hour and a half, but it's really an hour and a half of education. See, we're not in there to just blow smoke up your chimney. We are there to give you information you can use. We're giving you the, the framework for the map, and then and it's up to you to take action and become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited. And I'll, I'll sweeten the pot for you. Tonight, tonight, we have a case study. Now, case study is an event that is a members-only event. But since I'm a member and I can invite any guest I want, any one of you could be my guest at the virtual case study we're doing tonight. All you have to do is send me an email at askal at luinc.com. That's askal at luinc.com. Tell me you want to be a part of the case study, and I will get you connected. If tonight doesn't work for you, not a problem. Send me that email and say, tonight doesn't work. Get me into the next one. We've got one two weeks from now. So it gives you time. And that case study is going to show you actual members that have done 
actual real estate deals. They're going to show you how they found the property, what they did to acquire the property, anything they did to renovate the property and what those costs were, how they found the great tenant, how they got it up and running and, and operating smoothly. And more importantly, they open up the financials. They show you exactly what the returns are so that you can see that they're not on a roller coaster. You're the one that's on the darn roller coaster. And you know, I failed. I failed you. I was supposed to tell you about some of the best roller coasters in the world. And some of you are thinking, yeah, man, do that because it's on my bucket list. And I'll tell you, I, I did some serious searching and I, there's a lot of people that have a lot of opinions about what the best roller coasters are. And there's no shortage of man-made thrills in this world. There really aren't. And, you know, if you've got a special fondness for the roller coaster, and you should because most of you are on it with the stock market anyhow, stick around because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into uh, some of the ones that are definitely the coolest. But keep in mind, they were invented in the mid-18th century. And I think... The stock market was invented in the 19th century. So these roller coasters have been around for a while. The key thing is this. Do you want to be on them? And if so, what kind of roller coaster do you want to be on? Do you want to be on a roller coaster with your investments? Or do you want to be on a roller coaster for just the sheer thrill of it? And some of you, <laughs> you've combined the both. And that is a bad news story. Okay, when we come back, I'll give you what I promised on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. We're here to answer your questions and help you become financially free. And if you were financially free, you could follow your bucket list. You could follow whatever your dreams are. You know, you could get away from that financial roller coaster that you're on. Because I'll tell you what, I don't think the stock market is done churning and burning. I really don't. I mean, I, I was happy to see that the stock market at least tried to recover. It, it did recover on the NASDAQ. I mean, it hit a new high, but it's you know, dipping down. Hopefully, again, that word is hope. For those of you in the stock market, the pricing will continue to inch upward. But the key thing is this, inch upward. You know, you're looking at only a 7 maybe an 8% return on your investment. And I, I didn't make that up. Your financial planner told you that. So, you know, but when it dumps, when it takes, uh, when it takes a downward fall, it's like catching a burning knife. It is not a smart thing to do. And I'll tell you what, you know, in this last drop that we had, that was a 30% dump, you know, that went straight down. And if you look at how long it took the stock market to get to the point where it was able to drop 30%, that was a long time. And if you were one of those people that were getting ready to retire, and use that money, you saw your retirement dreams go up in smoke in February and March. You did. Now, we're into June, and it looks like it's becoming a little bit better. But what happens if you retire at the peak and the stock market declines? And therefore, there's there's less money because you're going to start selling those stocks. That's how you get money out of there. It's not just a big pile of cash waiting for you to take it out. No, you're going to wind up selling. So, you, you know, if that stock market is declining and you're in retirement, you're selling at a lower rate and it's depleting your money faster. Yeah. Think about it. I mean, sit down and actually think about it. If you've got a bucket list, and that bucket list is to ride roller coasters, and I'll tell you what, it's not necessarily on my bucket list, but if I was going to ride a roller coaster, it's not going to be the stock market. I am absolutely not in the stock market. No roller coasters for me. But this is kind of intriguing because I found uh, from Travel and Leisure, they've got a list of 15 different roller coasters that they say are the best in the world. And the number one roller coaster is called formula rosa it's at ferrari world in dubai the united arab emirates yeah and it says when it comes to speed no other coaster in the world can compare with formula rosa i don't know if you have to roll the r's there or the s's there i just did it uh developed 
to resemble a Ferrari space sports car because it looks like a it does look like a an extended sports car. This roller coaster is the fastest in the world. It launches r- riders from zero to 150 miles per hour in five seconds. Man, that is faster than David Fisher's Tesla. And I've been in that Tesla, and I'll tell you what, he can get from zero to 80 in like two tenths of a second. But I think this roller coaster is a little faster. You know, the track sits on a Ferrari racing course and swerves around 1.5 miles of track. The ride only lasts, get this, a minute and a half, but it's one of the most heart pounding 90 seconds you can experience on a roller coaster anywhere on the planet. Now, if you had passive income and you had a roller coaster addiction, you could just go to Dubai. You could just go ride that thing. A lot of you are thinking, wow, man, I can't go there. It's too far away. It costs too much money. Okay. Well, maybe we need to change what you're doing because what you're doing is ineffective and it's not working. Let's talk about a domestic roller coaster. This one is in New Jersey at Six Flags Great Adventure and it's called King Daka. And I'll tell you what, I'm looking at this thing and it looks menacing. It says this, this is the tallest roller coaster in the world and the fastest in North America. The track reaches heights of 456 feet. That's a 45 story building before sending riders hurtling down it get this 128 miles per hour a speed reached in just 3.5 seconds you know that's that's getting closer to david fisher's tesla but the king to Ka is one of the most intense rides around even though the whole experience only lasts 50 seconds i'll tell you what 50 seconds after 50 seconds i probably stand in there rattling okay the the next one is in nagashima spaland Japan. It's called the Steel Dragon 2000, and it honor it gets honors for the world's longest roller coaster. So this thing is it costs more than 52 million dollars to construct. It's 8,000 foot feet, 8,000 feet of track, and it's the seventh tallest steel coaster in the world, reaching 318 feet at its peak. The Steel Dragon 2000 also has the sixth longest drop which shoots passengers 95 miles per hour on a 306 foot descent yeah that sounds pretty wild you know and and it goes on there's there's one called the uh top thrill dragster in cedar point ohio here's one called the t express in everland south korea the goliath at six flags great america in illinois how about this one The Smiler, well, that doesn't sound like it's appropriately named, in Alton Towers, United Kingdom. And here's one called Full Throttle at Six Flags Magic Mountain in California. I have to admit, when I was a kid, I grew up in Las Vegas, and Six Flags Magic Mountain in in California was our go-to amusement park. Yeah, you could go to Disneyland and stuff like that, but Six Flags was where you went to get the adrenaline rush. That's where they basically put you in roller coasters that went 360-degree loops. They take you up in these giant towers and literally drop you like you're in a parachute that one scared the bejeebers out of me um yeah it did i was i don't know 17 years old never done anything like that i remember going up with with two of my girlfriends Uh, they weren't romantic girlfriends they were just girlfriends and uh you know grabbing one of them and just holding on for dear life when we got to the bottom she says what the hell's the matter with you and i said that ride that ride was what's the matter with me anyhow yeah that was tough let's get back into some of these roller coasters the taka it's in fuji q highland japan and i'm looking at that thing and it is gnarly looking it says the world's steepest roller coaster may be one of the most terrifying two-minute experiences in the world the takabisha starts by plummeting riders into a dark tunnel and it only gets scarier from there the crowding feature is a mind-bending 121 degree beyond vertical drop through several loops and inversions I'll tell you what, that sounds like one that, you know, hopefully you were, you had an empty stomach uh, before you started going on that particular ride. Here's one called the Scenic Railway in, in Luna Park, Australia. The Steel Curtain in Kennywood, Pennsylvania. The Yukon Striker, Canada's Wonderland in Canada. The Gravity Max in Lipau Land Discovery World, Thailand. Oh my goodness. The Tower of Terror, Gold Reef City in South Africa. And the Du... Duponpa in Fuji Q Highland, Japan. So they've got they've got two gnarly uh, roller coasters in that particular part. So, man, you know what? Riding that roller coaster, 
I have memories of doing that. I remember, you know, the Colossus at uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain in California. I was I was scared to death to ride that thing until one of my girlfriends uh, basically said, look, man, I'm going to hold your hand. Let's go do this thing. And I went and did it. And you know what? My stomach muscles were like clenched. And, and, and back in high school, I was a swimmer. So I had I had pretty good. I was a lot better shape than I'm in right now. And my, my, I just remember my stomach muscles were just so clenched and my emotions were just peaking. And I was just like, ah, and I made it through. And you know what I did? I realized I could do it. And I went back and I got on the ride again. Okay. I went through the same nervous condition, the same, you know, fear factor, all that nine yards. But, you know, I did it for fun. I did it and I had a choice as to whether or not I should do it or not. A lot of you in the stock market, unfortunately, you don't have a choice. Your employer mandates that you contribute money to that. And oh yeah, maybe they contribute money to it too. And that's all fine and dandy. But read the fine print of what happens to the money that they contribute to your 401k. You'd be amazed at the differences that are out there. And maybe I should do that as a show one day. I don't know. But read the fine print. And the other component of it is this. Make sure you understand your investments. Know your investments. You know, investing in mutual funds is just a hedge fund for disaster, in my opinion. You know, Warren Buffett calls it diversification because it's a hedge against ignorance because you have chosen not to understand how to invest. And that is wrong. That is wrong. Now, you can go look at a bunch of financial planner websites, and they try and teach you the mechanisms of the stock market and things like that. And there are some of you out there that do direct trading. I get that. I did that for a while. You know what I found that up to be? Just another job because you have to research each and every company, and then you have to time it perfectly because when you find the right one that's going to peak and go up, you find that everybody else has figured that out too. So by the time the market is open, you've already been priced out of the investment. Terrible, isn't it? Yeah, been there, done that, ain't going back. So if you're on the roller coaster, now's your time to pick the roller coaster you want to be on. And I'll tell you what, with real estate, it's not a roller coaster. If you know what you're doing, if you've got proper mentoring, it is a much more efficient way to retire yourself and you can get it done in five years or less. And remember, it's not the money, it's the lifestyle. Have a great day. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.